February 10th, 2025, a notable shift in seismic activity is unfolding across Southern California, with a series of tremors occurring along the Garlock Fault shear zone and extending southward into the San Andreas Fault's southern segment. Throughout the morning and afternoon, a swarm of earthquakes has been intensifying, the strongest reaching a magnitude of 3.6. However, rather than being confined to a single location, this activity appears to be part of a broader seismic pattern affecting the region. This development bears similarities to the events of the previous year when a magnitude 5.4 earthquake near Bakersfield marked a period of heightened seismicity. In fact, Southern California recorded more magnitude 4.0 earthquakes last year than at any time since the mid-1880s, suggesting a return to increased tectonic unrest. The latest recorded tremor, a magnitude 2.4, struck within the shear zone, an area where stress accumulates between the primary plate boundary and adjacent fault structures. Just seconds later, a magnitude 3.2 earthquake occurred to the north indicating rapid, consecutive movements along the fault system. Seismic activity in Southern California continues to intensify, with new tremors detected near the China Lake Station. A magnitude 3.2 earthquake stands out as the most prominent event in this sequence, closely followed by a 2.4 occurring just seconds later to the south. This pattern of back-to-back -back tremors suggests ongoing tectonic strain, particularly along the San Andreas Fault, where built-up stress has been accumulating for centuries. Of particular concern is the southern segment of the San Andreas Fault, a region that has not experienced a major rupture in over 300 years. Historical data indicates that this fault is capable of generating a magnitude 8.1 earthquake, and given the elapsed time since its last significant movement, the probability of a major event is increasing. Similar concerns extend to the central section of the fault, including the Parkfield area, as well as further north, where the last major ruptures occurred in 1812 and 1857, both producing earthquakes in the upper magnitude 7 range. The latest recorded tremor in this ongoing sequence, a magnitude 1.8, occurred at a depth of approximately 4.5 miles, consistent with past seismic activity in the region. While isolated earthquakes are common, the widespread distribution of these tremors across Southern California is notable. The sheer number of quakes exceeding magnitude 2.5 in a short time frame suggests a significant shift in regional stress dynamics, raising concerns about potential larger events if this trend continues. Seismic activity along the San Andreas Fault has intensified, with five noticeable tremors occurring in the region, the strongest reaching a magnitude of 3.6. While some may believe that these smaller quakes help release built-up stress, experts, including renowned seismologist Dr. Lucy Jones, have emphasized that this is not the case. Low-magnitude earthquakes do little to alleviate the immense strain accumulating along the fault, which remains capable of producing a catastrophic event as powerful as an 8.1-magnitude earthquake. The current pattern of seismic activity is strikingly similar to what was observed last year when multiple magnitude 4.0 earthquakes were recorded across the region. Despite that increase in activity, a major rupture did not occur. However, today presents a different scenario, with tremors occurring in a widespread and persistent manner. The growing frequency of these quakes suggests a significant buildup of tectonic stress, heightening the likelihood of a larger event. Recent data reveals a cluster of quakes, including a magnitude 3.0, followed by a series of smaller aftershocks. The concerning aspect of this situation is not just the individual tremors, but the overall pattern of increased seismicity across the fault system. Such activity serves as a critical indicator that strain is actively accumulating, increasing the probability of a significant earthquake. While there is no way to predict precisely when the long-anticipated rupture will occur, the presence of persistent seismic activity raises the risk considerably. Historically, after a major earthquake, the region experiences a prolonged period of relative stability, sometimes lasting centuries. However, until that moment arrives, 
the strain will continue to build, keeping the potential for a devastating earthquake ever present. Even a magnitude 5.0 or 6.0 earthquake is far from sufficient to release the immense strain accumulating along a major fault system like the San Andreas. Only after a truly large earthquake occurs does the region enter a temporary period of relative stability before stress gradually builds up again. Southern California remains a prime area of concern, but it is not the only fault system showing signs of activity. The Puente Hills Fault, which runs directly beneath downtown Los Angeles, has begun experiencing seismic activity once again. This fault system, capable of producing a devastating magnitude 7.5 earthquake, has an estimated recurrence interval of 3,000 to 4,000 years. Recent studies suggest that the last major rupture may have occurred within that time frame, raising concerns that it could be nearing another significant event. This fault's close proximity to one of the most densely populated urban areas in the United States makes it even more dangerous than a magnitude 8.1 quake along the San Andreas, which lies farther east. While the San Andreas would still inflict severe damage, an earthquake directly beneath Los Angeles would have catastrophic consequences due to its location. Other nearby fault systems also warrant attention. The Malibu Coast Fault, which was active during last year's seismic events, has yet to show activity today, but remains a potential source of concern. Historically, when stress accumulates on one fault, it often leads to back-building pressure along adjacent faults within the Pacific Plate, triggering further seismic events. The interconnected nature of these faults means that stress redistribution can create a cascading effect, increasing the likelihood of significant earthquakes across the region. The current level of activity is unsettling, with multiple areas experiencing tremors, indicating a pressurized system. Secondary fault lines branching off from the San Andreas are showing signs of strain, further emphasizing the growing seismic stress across Southern California. The inland movement of activity is another critical signal that pressure is intensifying, surrounding the region in a way that suggests an eventual major rupture may not be far off. The widespread nature of this activity is cause for concern, and continued monitoring of these fault systems remains crucial. Recent seismic activity near the Garlock Fault Shear Zone has intensified, with notable movement recorded earlier in the afternoon. This pattern, combined with a series of earthquakes that have occurred since early morning, presents a striking development. Despite misconceptions, these smaller tremors do not relieve significant stress along the fault lines. Leading seismologists and geologists have consistently refuted the idea that moderate earthquakes prevent larger ones from occurring. Instead, they serve as reminders of the immense pressure continuing to build beneath the surface. While Northern California has remained relatively quiet, the current seismic pattern is eerily similar to last year's activity. A historical comparison of magnitude 4.0 and above earthquakes in Southern California reveals a staggering increase. Data since 1980 shows that last year alone saw 31 earthquakes of this magnitude, an abnormally high number compared to previous decades. This surge in seismicity is significant, especially when analyzed alongside major past events such as the Ridgecrest sequence where a magnitude 6.7 earthquake was followed by a 7.1. Examining earthquake trends over time provides critical insight into shifting stress patterns along California's fault systems. The concentration of recent activity suggests a system under considerable strain, warranting close monitoring. While smaller tremors may not signal an imminent large event, their clustering and frequency indicate an increasingly unstable fault environment. Seismic activity in the region has shown a significant increase, with a notable rise in magnitude 4.0 earthquakes over the past year, more than any period since the mid-1980s. This trend, recognized even by leading seismologists like Dr. Lucy Jones, challenges the misconception that smaller tremors help relieve tectonic stress. Instead, Heightened seismicity may indicate growing instability, potentially increasing the likelihood of a larger event 
rather than preventing one. Historical data reveals that major earthquakes, such as the 7.3 magnitude event in 1992 and the 7.1 magnitude Hector Mine earthquake in 1999, were not directly linked to the San Andreas Fault, but were likely influenced by its immense strain. Similarly, the Ridgecrest sequence of 2019, which produced a 7.1 magnitude quake, occurred along the Little Lake Fault, rather than the San Andreas. Despite these events occurring on separate fault systems, they all reflect the broader tectonic pressures shaping the region. Clusters of seismic activity, such as those observed around Simi Valley and the San Fernando area, remain a cause for concern. The devastating 6.7 magnitude Northridge earthquake in 1994 serves as a stark reminder of how powerful these faults can be. While recent activity along the San Andreas Fault has so far remained below magnitude 4.0, peaking at 3.6, the overall pattern suggests an amplified state of stress. Whether these tremors are foreshocks to a larger rupture or indicators of shifting pressures, the situation warrants close observation. Even a seemingly minor event could act as the final trigger for a much larger seismic release. Seismic activity near the Santorini volcano remains elevated, with a 5.2 magnitude earthquake marking the second largest event in the ongoing sequence. While most of the tremors have been concentrated in the northern part of the region, recent days have seen a noticeable migration of earthquakes southward toward the volcano itself. This shift coincides with reports of ground uplift along the eastern side of the caldera, including within the volcanic cone, signaling potential magma movement beneath the surface. The implications remain uncertain, but whether the activity is purely tectonic or a precursor to volcanic unrest, the region continues to experience persistent seismic escalation. A recent 3.4 magnitude earthquake, located north of the primary swarm area, adds an interesting dynamic to the evolving pattern. Despite brief periods of relative calm, seismic instruments continue to register significant activity, including multiple magnitude 4.0 plus quakes and at least one event exceeding magnitude 5.0. The ongoing fluctuations suggest that the situation is far from stabilizing and the potential for further escalation remains. But here's the question. Did the M7.6 earthquake in the Caribbean trigger or contribute to what's currently happening in the San Andreas Fault? The Earth groaned as a magnitude 7.6 earthquake shook the Caribbean, its seismic waves radiating outward like ripples from a massive stone dropped into an unseen ocean beneath our feet. The event, powerful enough to be felt across multiple nations, reignited fears not only of immediate aftershocks, but of something far more unsettling, the possibility that this colossal release of energy had disturbed distant faults, including the infamous San Andreas Fault in California. Could the seismic forces unleashed in one part of the world have subtly influenced or even accelerated the seismic activity of another fault thousands of miles away? The answer, buried within the complex mechanics of plate tectonics and the propagation of seismic waves, is both scientifically intriguing and deeply concerning. Seismic waves are the messengers of an earthquake's power, each type carrying a different signature of destruction. The first to arrive are the P waves, or primary waves, the fastest travelers in the seismic world. These waves compress and expand the earth much like sound waves traveling through air, allowing them to move through solid rock, magma, and even the molten outer core of our planet. If an earthquake is the sudden uncoiling of a vast geological spring, then P waves are the first tremors of that released energy. They are often felt as a quick jolt before the more destructive shaking arrives. Close behind them come the S waves, or secondary waves, which move in a shearing, side-to-side -side motion. Unlike P waves, they cannot travel through liquids, meaning they are halted by the Earth's outer core. Yet within the rigid layers of the crust and mantle, they deliver an unmistakable shock, causing buildings to sway and fracture. If P waves are the warning, S waves are the impact. 
the ones that begin to break apart the structures of cities and landscapes. But it is the surface waves that hold the greatest destructive potential. These slower moving waves, Rayleigh waves, which create an undulating ocean-like motion, and love waves, which shake the ground side to side, linger within the uppermost crust, rolling across the land and causing catastrophic damage. They can travel great distances, and in the case of the M7.6 Caribbean earthquake, they would have radiated outward for thousands of miles. Though their power weakens with distance, they still have the potential to trigger small seismic shifts in faraway regions, especially in faults already under high stress. The San Andreas Fault is one of the most studied fault lines in the world, and for good reason. It is a ticking time bomb, accumulating strain as the Pacific Plate grinds relentlessly against the North American Plate. Geologists know that this fault is due for a major earthquake, what they call the Big One, but the exact trigger remains unknown. While earthquakes are generally caused by the gradual buildup of stress reaching a critical point, there is increasing evidence that seismic waves from distant quakes can influence or even accelerate this process in pre-stressed fault zones. This process, known as dynamic triggering, occurs when passing seismic waves slightly alter the stress balance within an already unstable fault. There is precedent for this kind of remote influence. The 1992 Landers earthquake in California, a magnitude 7.3 event, triggered increased seismic activity as far away as Yellowstone, over 1,000 kilometers, 620 miles, away. In 2002, a massive magnitude 7.9 earthquake in Alaska sent seismic waves racing across North America, influencing fault systems as far as Mexico. The 2010 Chile earthquake, one of the most powerful ever recorded, was linked to subtle shifts in seismicity thousands of miles away. These cases highlight the surprising interconnectedness of Earth's tectonic system, where even a distant event can subtly disturb a fragile fault. If the Caribbean earthquake had any impact on the San Andreas Fault, it would likely be through such a mechanism. Scientists monitoring California's seismic network would be watching closely for any unusual swarms of small quakes, one of the key indicators that a fault is experiencing new stress. While a single event like the M7.6 earthquake may not be enough to directly cause a large rupture in California, it could contribute to the accumulation of stress in a way that makes a future earthquake more likely. Adding to the concern is the fact that the San Andreas Fault has been relatively quiet along its southern section, which runs near Los Angeles. This portion has not experienced a major earthquake since 1857, meaning over a century and a half of built-up stress remains locked in place. In contrast, the northern section, near San Francisco, was the site of the infamous 1906 earthquake, which released a significant amount of tension. If a distant earthquake were to send just the right pattern of seismic waves through the region, it could act as the proverbial straw that breaks the camel's back. Yet, the mechanics of earthquakes are not purely deterministic. The Earth's crust is a dynamic, ever-moving system, and while we can measure stress accumulation and detect slight changes in seismicity, we cannot yet predict the exact moment when a fault will finally rupture. The M7.6 earthquake in the Caribbean may not have directly set off an event along the San Andreas Fault, but it is a reminder of how fragile the equilibrium of Earth's tectonic plates can be. For those living along the fault, the lesson is clear. The risk is ever-present, and preparation is key. Whether the next big earthquake is tomorrow, next year, or decades away, the forces at play beneath our feet are always in motion, influenced by events both near and far. While seismologists continue to study the possible connections between distant quakes, the people of California can only wait and brace themselves for the moment when the San Andreas finally gives way. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more updates on Earth's most mysterious and powerful forces. Thanks for watching, and stay safe out there.